Okay. Cool. I see your message. Um, oh, that's awesome stuff. Awesome sauce is running. So I'm recording my screen here so I can help. So whatever I say today, you can go back and refer to this video. Um, and uh, work through this, the final. So you're going to use Scribus. You're going to be, you need to use your laptops with Scribus on it. Scribus, I like Scribus better. Scribus is, is the video says Scribus. This is Scribus. Use your scribe. Scribe us. Um, all right. So when you open up, it will open up to the new dialog box. And for all our projects, it's going to be 1224 by 792. That's going to be, it's going to be, and for now, one page. And we're going to make the margins at 25 points. Now, one of the way, quick ways to, to set all the margins to whatever, you can even do 20, um, is to click on the constrain tool. The constrain means that whatever you change, it'll change for all of them. So if I change this to 20 and then hit tab, all the, the margins hit change to 20. So I've got my size width of 1224, height of 792, which is 11 by 17, which is two eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper next to each other, which is the size of a yearbook spread. So then I click OK. And I already have my properties, align and distribute, and layers, uh, dialog boxes or toolboxes already open. And I would normally put them on, because I have two screens, I would put them on this screen over here, but because um, you need to see them, I'm not. So I've got my background, my desktop. I'm gonna go up here to view and change it to fit to height so I can see my whole, my whole um, workspace. And here's my workspace. There's my 20, 20 point um, margins all the way around. And to start with, I want to have a, uh, I want to use a, a background color because if I don't do anything, it's going to be the color of paper, in, in this case, white. Um, so I'm going to click on my shape tool. I'm going to click on my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to click on the background. And instead of clicking and dragging, just click on the background. It gives me the dialog. And I'm going to make it a width of 1224 and a height of 792. And click OK. And because I clicked right here, it's not centered in the right place. So I'll go over here to the X and Y position on my properties um, tool and 0, 0. So now I've got a rectangle that is filling the whole space. And if you know, for um, for if, if we're going to print this, um, you're going to want to bleed this out beyond the edge of the page. And we'll talk about that later. But for the purpose of this assignment, just leave it exactly the same size as the page. Now, I'm going to click on colors in my design here. I'm going to change uh, the color of the background. I'm going to say dark blue. Cyan. Have a color tool. And let's see, I think there's a now you can put a gradient in. if I wanted to, but we'll just leave it normal. All right, so I've got my background color and I'm gonna go back up to, to XYZ, which is the XYZ position and click on the block tool because I don't wanna drag this around. I don't wanna move this, this background because that's just gonna get messy and ugly. All right, so I've got my um, my background setup, I want to add some photos. And in adding photos, you don't just add the photo, you add a photo box in which you're going to put the photo. So you're gonna go up here to insert and it says insert image frame. 
and this one I'm going to click and say I'm just going to drag a photo frame in, in roughly the right size and it's just a red box it's not there's no image in there so I can move this around make this a little bit smaller there we go I'm going to right click in it and I say get image now I've already gone into um, I've already gone into the program and picked an image because so I don't have to navigate to where my images are. So you should have on your in your folder somewhere a folder for all the yearbook stuff. Could be on the desktop. So I can click on mine, then then I could go now desktop to get to this way. I can, oh, actually I click click here and desktop is right here. So if you click on your username, which is going to be yearbook something desktops right here so I click on the desktop but my photos are all in in my own folder that I set up um, already and I'm gonna make this a little bit you can actually make this bigger and make this bigger I didn't make I thought it would make the the thumbnail bigger um, there's one size 1024 by 683 so obviously that's bigger than my frame so if I right click again adjust frame to image adjust image to oh, I'm just frame to image for now that's way too big so I'm gonna make that smaller now I want to hold the hold the control key, alt key. There we go. No, that's not the alt key. Not the shift key. It's not free. So you can actually change the frame and leave, you know leave this big or change the or change the size of the frame and then change the well, let's go back to this now because i'm i'm right now it's it's a width of 1024 by 683 so if i change if i change this to constrain and I change 1024 to make this 400 and then so that's still a little bit too big let's say 300 now if I right click again and say adjust image to frame now I've got my first picture ready to start arranging and now I'm going to control C and control V and now I'm going to get my second picture. I'm going to get in. So I, I copied my picture and pasted it, which is copies and pastes both the frame and the picture. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say get image. Whoops. Um, I'm going to say get image and then pick my second picture. And so now I have another picture and then I'm going to make another frame for and I want to make this one a height of 400 what would, what do, which one would this was 300 sorry a height of 300 to kind of keep everything the same I know my I, I know my next pictures are are in portrait format so constrain it doesn't really matter as long as I make this 300 Now I've got my next frame going. I'll right click. I'll say get image and I'll go to um, this one. Too big. Adjust image to frame. Now I see my frame is a little bit big and now I'm going to adjust frame to image. So now I know that my, my it's 224.22 uh, by 300. So if I copy again, let's see, V. There's my, I copied and pasted with Control C and Control V. 
there's my next picture. I'm going to right click and um, get image. I'm going to say, was it with the, the uh, Sagrada Familia? Where'd it go? Yep. Okay, so there's my another another image, another image, another image. And let's see, I'm going to copy this one because my last image is also a, a landscape style. I'm going to get my image. Um, and it's going to be the Valencia Science Center. And I'm going to say adjust frame to image just in case it's different, but it's the same. Okay, so these pictures were actually a little bit narrow, wider than these pictures. I can't remember which is which, but okay, I've got my five photos and I want you to use do a layout with five photos. And um, I'm going to probably do this one a little bit differently than the um, than the other classes because this is more like a layout. So when getting your pictures and doing your layout, there's it's a little bit different. Each of these photos has a direction. And when placing these photos in my layout, the direction of the photo will have an effect on where it goes. Now, I could do a layout where it's just all the pictures put together. Actually, I think this one. So, for example, the picture of this this uh, statue from Sagrada Familia. Um, it's facing to the left. It should not be over here on the left side of the frame, the left side of the layout, because it's the, the eye is just going to go zipping out of the frame. All right, so I'm going to put this one over on the right somewhere. Now this picture, if it had a direction it was facing, because the cross is on sort of the right side of this frame inside a frame, and the city is out here on the left, the cross is sort of facing the city, so this picture is also a left-facing picture. So it should go on the right side of the frame, but it's got all this kind of support on the bottom. And you could argue, well, this is this seems to be tall, higher in the sky than this, so you could put it up here, or you could put it down here below. So it could be like this. And let's put that there, and let's put this here. And now I have a couple of pictures placed. And I might want to do this one a little bit different. So these pictures, so this one's kind of got a swirl this way, this swirls this way. So these might go together over here. And I think, yes, this one's going to be easier than the other program, this. So I've kind of got this going here. I'm going to put this over here. So this one, I think, is going to go, I'm going to make it bigger. Maybe I'll make it the same height as this one. So to make it the same height, let's do it exactly. Um, height is 300, so let's go click on this one. And I was pretty close. Want to make sure this stays constrained, so 300. And then I'm going to right click and adjust frame to image. And there we go. So now I've got kind of an eye line going on. Now I can make over here on this side, I can, let's see if we can hi highlight these both. And you notice how they're not lined up with each other. That's what this align and distribute is for. And we're going to align tops. There we go. Now the tops are aligned there and we can align these two let's see let's see align all these oops i was holding the wrong button i'm holding the shift key to select more than one thing and i'm align those to the left and because i was uh, let's see What I want to do here for my design, for my layout. Let's make it do it this way. Oh, I 
left. And then align bottom. Move this over. Okay, so now I have sort of a layout going on here. I think I might want to, okay. Um, now it's where I wanna kind of figure out my layout. I'm trying to lay out my images and I'll put, um, so it looks like this space over here is wrong. So I've got this, this is, Let's see, X, Y position, X is 21.76. Let's make this both 30. And now let's make this so it's 30. Now, here's where I'm arranging this. I want to like put a 30 pixel space around the outside here. To put a 30 pixel space around the outside of this one, I want to make this corner 30 down. So I'm going to make this corner the reference point. So I, in this box, I change the base point. So look at the X, Y position. It says 967 by 21. If I change it to this one, it says 1191.56 by 21. So now I can change the Y position to 30. But I want this space to be 30 as well. So I know that the X position is the X goes across the top and this is 1224. So that'd be 1224 minus 30. So 1224 so will be 1200, be 1194, um, I think. So X position would be 1194. And that, look, that looks close. So then to align this one, I would just go to this one and do the align right. And it looks pretty close. So, and then if I wanted to make these spaces, if this is 30 pixels, this is 30 pixels, maybe I should make this 30 pixels as well. So I can figure that out in my own way. So let's say that's gotta be, uh, X position. Oh, I want to change it back to the left side to make it 30 pixels. And then Y position 575. Let's make the reference point the lower left hand corner. So then I can make the bottom. So it's 792. So it'd be 762. No, that's not right. 792 minus 30, 760. Yeah, that is right. Seems wrong though. It does seem wrong. No, that's right, 762. So then we can, since this is selected, hold the shift key and select this one and align tops. And now they're both in position. This one should move over a little bit and we'll get that one 762 as well. It's still 762. And then we'll look at the lower right hand. Here's the easy one. So this says 330. So this corner should be 360 uh, X position. So there's a bit of arranging going on here. So we can make these images. I'm not liking that one. Maybe we'll move these over. And theoretically, you should be aware of the gutter, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, now I want to put in some text. And it's going to be a title. 
and I'm going to put in here, double click in here, and I'll start typing. So, and I don't like that. So, do I have? I'm sure I have it. Where is my? There it is. So in the properties folder, one is text, and I've got my text here. Let's make that text a lot bigger. Not that big. Still bigger. But I'm going to change my text box size by clicking outside, and then I can move this over. And let's change the color. Oh, the center, the center it. Make it white and find some. Uh oh, that's not going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem because you want to find something that looks good, but it's, it's what I'm seeing here is that it doesn't seem to have a um, preview for the font for the font display. I mean, you can go through and just click one at a time and and keep. Uh oh. Stay at home order. So we can find our, let's see if there's a similar font to one I had before. That's kind of cool for a display font. That's weird. Too big. Okay, so you notice I made the font really huge, and we got this red box over here. I mean, that's just saying that the the box is not tall enough to show or big enough to show all the font. So, whoops, too small. There we go. So let's put this here, and we'll click here, here. So I clicked on this picture and hold the shift key and click on this picture and then I click on this and I click on go to uh, align and where's my distribute evenly Oh wait, distribute, it's this one. Distribute is that didn't work. Make the horizontal gaps between items equal. There we go. So now I've spaced my European travel title out so you can see. Now there, there's a, some space there. The next point, part of this layout is you want to get some body font. Body is the the written description that is just the text where you add a, like a paragraph or something. Um, and so let's find, let's insert another text box, text frame. I'm going to put it over over here and start talking about Barcelona, Barcelona, and Anthony Gaudi.
Okay, Anthony Gaudi was the visionary ca Catalan architect and designer of Sagrada Familia, one of the most famous cathedrals in all of Europe. Has been I think. I'm just trying to trying for memory. So yes, the, the cathedral's been in construction under construction for almost for o almost over a hundred years, I think. Nearly a hundred years or just uh, around a hundred years. Um crazy, crazy time. All right, so let's find a good body font. And I think Baskerville Old Face. Oh, wait, I need to click out here and click back and then go to text and change Arial to Baskerville Old Face. Nope, too formal and too small. Let's make this 20 and make the box bigger. And we'll do this, the sizing up of things later. Baskerville Old Face. No. Now I got to figure out where you can find the font samples. No. Garmond. White. All right, that spacing is wrong. Oh, is that what I think it is? All right, so let's put this down here. So now one of the features of design is now this is, this should not be right uh, left aligned, it should be right aligned. So we'll go over here to alignment and go to right aligned. Um, so how you arrange, how you set up, how you place all these different items on the page is the assignment getting the, now I've made my, this is sort of my basic design. Now uh, this is a body font. And if I put more text over here, describing the v Valencia science center, I should not change the font face size or color of the body font when I would put something over here. Let's say maybe I put this, let's make this a little bit wider so it's the same size as the, so font over here and I might not, I also might not put it as right justified, I might be fully justified. So that didn't look good, let's make it left justified. Or left, left, uh, aligned so there's some font for the and then maybe uh, we might want to make the body font that body font might be too big overall let's make it a little bit smaller nope yes right there so now anytime I use body font it's going to be this size anytime I use a title I have a title on another page I might use that same font so having a, a and most like the yearbook last year only had five fonts display fonts header fonts body fonts and some other like uh, fonts to be used they were there was not a huge number of fonts so if you look at back some of the early yearbooks for hearts I was not in charge and, and we didn't have there was the person in charge was basically creating the book but didn't have any idea about design and so the the book ended up um, with 
I think 20 different fonts because each each page designer designed their own page. It was a, a nightmare. It, I was I, I was going crazy seeing that going on. But now we have our own book. We can do these basic design principles and get the right kinds of fonts and the right kind of uh, settings and you know setups for our design. Now, one thing you can do in design. Let's say I want to make a do something where I put a, a Let's see, I'll put a shape behind. Oh, so I'm gonna draw a shape. And one of the, one of the features of shapes is, let's see. Oh, I think I have to draw the shape first. There's a shape. And I go to the shape fu function Oh, I can edit the shape. There's a editing table where I can change these, change a bunch of the features of the shape around here. But let's just say I want to go back to the shape. Well, that's the line. I want the That's weird. Oh, there we go. I'm just messing with the shape now. Let's go back to colors. So, and then layers is here somewhere where I can rearrange that. Oops, that was it, okay. Here we go. Yeah, I can figure that out later. But that's the basic idea. You're going to um, oh, I see. I want to add a layer and put this. Yeah, let's see. Oops. Now I'll get the layer thing figured out. But this is the idea. This is a range. So the um, assignment is to create a design, include images in your design, pay attention to the direction of the images. Like this image would not work as well down here because it's, well, actually it might, it would, might work down here. Works up here too. So this image, on on the other hand, looking in, it should look into the page, not out. This image should not be over here on this side. Let's see now. All right. 